Good evening, friends. Uh, it's good for us to uh, open our Bibles once again to Genesis 19. And uh, after the warning uh, uh, of God's judgment and the danger of worldliness, we come once again to see the beauty of God's relationship with Abraham, the God's friend. And so we read in verse 27, And Abraham went early in the morning to the place where he had stood before the Lord. And he looked down towards Sodom and Gomorrah and towards all the land of the valley. And he looked, and behold, the smoke of the land went up like the smoke of a furnace. What an incredible scene that must have been. And yet Abraham's heart must have sang. At the end of chapter 18, we see the beautiful uh, boldness of Abraham to intercede as a high priest for uh, these wicked uh, people and trying to rescue them, trying to get God to save the city if there are only a few righteous people. And yet, there wasn't ten righteous people. Now, as Abraham stood there, he doesn't know that the Lord rescued Lot. He doesn't know that the messengers dragged Lot and his family out of there and gave them a chance to escape. He doesn't know any of that. And so Abraham might have been very discouraged, thinking that his prayers were useless. That's often how we feel, isn't it? We often feel like God does not hear us when we pray. Now, what is remarkable is God has answered Abraham's prayer, but he doesn't know it yet, which is encouragement for us. Because sometimes we think God has not answered when he has already answered. It might not be exactly as we want it to be, but it is exactly as it should be, as God intended it to be. It's God's perfect answer to our prayers. Now, this is underlined for us in verses 29, where God makes it very clear to us that it is because of his relationship with Abraham that he saved Lot. It is because of Abraham's intercession. Not because Abraham prayed or because Abraham's, it's because of his grace that he answered Abraham's prayer. But it is in Abraham's intercession, in Abraham, that God, in his grace, reaches out to Lot and saves him. Listen to these words. So it was when God destroyed the cities of the valley, God remembered Abraham and sent Lot out of the midst of the overthrow when he overthrew the cities in which Lot lived. The emphasis is not on Abraham but on God. God remembered Abraham. It's this very same language that we get in uh, uh, Genesis 8, where uh, we have that other instance of God's ferocious judgment upon human wickedness in the flood. And we read in verse 8, But God remembered Noah and all the beasts and all the livestock that were with him in the ark. And God made wind blow over the earth and the water subsided. It is when God remembered Noah that his judgment subsided. 
and the rescue of Noah and the animals began there. Noah is saved because God remembered. And that remembrance is important because it, it's, it's not that God forgot. God can't forget. It is really God calls to mind his covenant, his special relationship with Noah, and therefore he acts for his good. And now God because of his special relationship with Abraham, acts. But instead, and this is the difference, instead of saving Noah, or instead of saving Abraham like he saved Noah when he remembered, it's because he remembers Abraham that he saves Lot. Isn't that remarkable? It reminds us that uh, as the Lord has said, those who bless you, I will bless. Those who are related to you will be blessed by me. And that's how the covenant worked. The blessings of the covenant flows by God's grace through another. Now, it's not because Abraham is great that Lot is saved. No. It's because God's grace is so amazing. Abraham was the bearer of the seed of the woman, the promise of God's salvation that is coming into this world. And here, Abraham reveals to us something of the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, God saves us from his coming judgment because Jesus has stepped into the place of God's judgment and is interceding for us. You see, Abraham points beyond himself. And the grace God showed to Lot is ultimately not because of Abraham, but because of Abraham's great son. The prophet Isaiah gives us the greatest picture of what this son of Abraham is going to do. He is going to step into the place of God's condemnation that we deserve. Isaiah 53 we read, but he was pierced for our transgressions, he was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace, and by his wounds we were healed. All we like sheep have gone astray, we have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. God laid the judgment of our sin upon him. Right at the end of this song, we read in verse 12, Therefore I will divide him a portion with many, and he shall divide the spoils with the strong, because he poured out his soul to death and was numbered with transgressors, yet he bore the sin of many, and makes intercession for transgressors. Because of his accomplishment, he is able to pray for sinners. And because of his prayer, salvation comes. And we see that very clearly in that verse we spoke about when we talked about Abraham's prayer. Luke 23, verse 34 where Christ prays from the cross, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. The heart of our Saviour is revealed in that prayer. He is interceding for us. And that's why the writer to the Hebrews in verse uh, 25 of chapter 7 says, Consequently, 
He is able to save to the uttermost those who draw near to God through him, since he lives to make intercession for them. In Christ we have one that is greater than Abraham, one who can make intercession for us. And he will be heard by the Father. And he is able to save to the utmost. Why? Because he and he alone lives forever to intercede for us. And it's his presence at the Father's right hand and his intercession that we need to be thankful for. For everything we have comes to us through Christ and his prayers. But more than that, that should be an encouragement to us to pray. You see, Abraham might have been discouraged thinking that his prayer was not answered. And yet, the Lord saved Lot. The Lord saved Lot because of Abraham and because of Abraham's prayer. He extended grace. You and I will not know who our prayer saved now. But one day, the Lord will reveal what His grace have done in response to our prayers. Do not stop praying for whomever the Lord lays upon your heart. No matter how wicked their lives are, no matter how wayward they are, God has the power to save. So continue to pray. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you that you are a saviour and that you continue to pray for us, Lord Jesus, and that your prayer is effective in our own lives. We think of family members. We think of colleagues, we think of uh, those who are in the world, in the media, entertainment, who are living lives of rebellion against you, who live for themselves, for their glory. We ask that you would send your spirit to save them. Whoever we are thinking of now, Come and save and deliver them and make them your own. May your grace come in power. Remember our Saviour. We pray in his name alone. Amen. May the Lord bless you and your family tonight. Bye-bye.